everybody, Lego Doctor here, back with another video. Today we have the uh, 2013 set Extremist Seaport Battle from Iron Man 3 with 195 pieces. So let's start off with these minifigures. First off, we have Aldrich Killian. Um, I like the direction they went for the minifigure in some ways and dislike it in other ways. He does have some back printing to show some pleats and uh, front printing to show just his blue shirt and tan suit. Um, I like the idea Lego was going for with the face being glow in the dark. Let's just turn off this light and then you can kind of see his face is made to glow in the dark just like Extremis shows. Um, the hair piece isn't super accurate. It's it's okay, but it's not very accurate. Um, also, especially this face, it looks all right with the uh, glow in the dark head. That's kind of whitish, but the back face is just kind of a normal face, and it just looks really pale, which looks really weird in my opinion. So. I don't really like it, but still, it's a very nice minifigure overall, especially for printing. Next up, we have Rhodey, aka War Machine, and he's got this the same Iron Man helmet in a new, well, new for the time, um, dark gray color with a silver faceplate. This is the uh, Mark II outfit, although, oddly enough, this doesn't appear in the movie in this uh, in these colors. It's the same armor, but it's uh, different. The um, armor that appears in the movie is the Iron Patriot, and um, that uh, excuse me. I um, well that is came in a different poly bag, so this is a bit inaccurate, but definitely. A really great minifigure. He's got some foot printing. He's got leg printing all over, even on the waist. He's got printing right here for the uh, sort of arc reactor. I'm not entirely sure how it works without an arc reactor in the suit. I'm not 100% sure uh, what the power source is when either uh, in the end of this movie when he had his arc reactor removed. And, uh, had his, um, suit non-reliant on the arc reactor at all. Uh, but underneath his, uh, cannon build, you can see his awesome back printing, and you can see that he has some army-based printing. He's got, like, a little star right there. He's got some, yeah, star, some eagle wings. And some numbers. Like right there. It says. Wait, hold on. FFZ446 or something like that. Also, it has a little bit of scratches. A few scratches on it. Um, especially on the faces. Uh, but he has two very nice accurate faces. Uh, first off, he's got this kind of calm, mildly stern face. Come on. Focus. There we go. And that calm face. Does that help? No, it doesn't. Um, he also has an, a very angry or furious face on the back. Then we have the cannon mount, which just has this neck mount, uh, this little piece right here, uh, the, um, modified one by one, with this little, what I'm gonna call a loop, we've got a claw piece and a lightsaber hilt in light gray, and that just attaches around the neck. And you can lift up the helmet all the way up there and close it again. Kind of snaps closed a little bit. And he's got the uh, 
studs and cylinders to represent jet fire and stabilizers. Same with uh, the Iron Man Mark 42. A really good minifigure. What I like about these older Iron Man uh, minifigures is they had uh, this printing for the feet. Uh, they were a little less detailed, but they have this printing for the feet. The only... Uh, the, the Mark 43, Mark 45, and the Mark 46 and 7 didn't have any printing for the feet. So, I really like uh, that they went back to that for the Mark 50. Uh, he has the same uh, helmet as um, the Mark 7 and the Mark 6. Um, unfortunately, that is a bit inaccurate, but... I still like it nonetheless. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe they were looking at concept art. Uh, but it's a very nice suit. It looks very similar, at least in the MCU, uh, to a to the Mark 43, which is the later variant. Is some nice back printing. This one looks a little bit less sleeker uh, and less detailed. I meant more sleek, actually. Uh, more sleek and less detailed. Uh, with the less detailed printing comes this kind of... It looks kind of like a red jumpsuit with a little bit of gold. Um, but yeah. They also made a special face for these Iron Man 3 sets. They have this one that has a really deep grin. And the other face on the back is really, really worried. Possibly having a panic attack. And, um, he's also got the trans studs, and, um, yeah, that's basically all for this minifigure. Let's get into the two builds. Let's start off with this nice buoy. It's got a couple of nice stickers saying JC82. I'm not sure what that means, but... Yeah, it's a nice little buoy. Got some blue for the water. And it, it uh, this is the primary, uh, actually, no, not the primary one, but a play feature of the set. And you can just, and it'll explode the buoy. Um, but that's pretty much it for that part of the build. Oh, fell over. Uh, but then we have Aldrich Killian's, uh, speedboat, which doesn't actually appear in the movie. Uh, so it's kind of inaccurate, just like um, the other Mandarin uh, versus Iron Man set. It's got, but it's, it is definitely a nice build, regardless of the fact that it doesn't appear. It's got this mechanism that works really well with the flick missiles, and I think is one of the um, first uh, flick missile mechanisms, aside from just doing the actual flicking for the missiles. Uh, and you just press down on this right here, and it launches a missile. Same with the other one, but I'm not going to demonstrate that, because I just lost that one. Uh, uh, it has some stickers as well. I'm not sure what this is on the back. Maybe a motor? It's got uh, some ventilation, maybe, right here. But there's ventilation there, too. Uh, we've got the cockpit, which also has... Um, a stickered little piece right here, which has, like, some navigation thing. A steering wheel. These two odd little missile bits that are still left there. And a lot of space. You could probably fit too many figures in there. If you wanted to, actually. So, yeah. Very nice. And, uh, here's the last feature of this. If you remove this, which is very easy, it comes off very easily. Uh, Aldrich has some accessories to play with. He has this dual barrel pistol, which I really like as a weapon. Honestly, I love getting this piece. And also, the... If I can get it out... Ooh. The dynamite piece. Which can just be held right here. Because they are actually pole based pieces. But yeah. Overall, a very, very nice set in my opinion. Um, 
very expensive nowadays, usually, because, you know, it's an older set, and uh, you usually can't get older sets for great prices nowadays, but I think it was worth it to buy it earlier this July, um, so, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, bye!